Today's video was supposed to be an Assassin's Creed Unity benchmarking video, but as I found it extremely difficult to deliver a video to you guys that would have been up to our usual standard of quality, thanks to various bugs and performance-related issues throughout the entirety of the benchmarking process, I decided to forego that plan entirely and play some better games, some more stable games instead, while testing the extremely interesting ASUS ROG Gladius gaming mouse. For more videos not related to Assassin's Creed Unity, subscribe to Linus Tech Tips. Corsair Gaming RGB keyboards feature precision Cherry MX RGB key switches for 16.8 million color per key backlighting for virtually unlimited customization. Click now to learn more. Clearly the most unusual feature of this mouse is the swappable Omron switches for the left and right click. But the details of that awesome feature we'll have to wait for later, for now we'll start with the physical overview. At first glance it will likely remind you of a Razer Death Adder, and for many people that's probably a good thing. Weighing in at around 115, 116 grams, it has some heft to it, and I personally like the weight, but if you're looking for a lighter mouse, you're kind of out of luck here, as unfortunately there is no changeable weighting system. In terms of grip, as always, it's different strokes for different folks, but personally this mouse is too small for me to palm, so I've fallen back to my trusty aggressive claw grip on the rubber sides. Unfortunately, I didn't find the rubberized material to be grippy enough to easily hold the mouse while moving and lifting it, especially once my fingers got a little bit sweaty after a little bit of gaming. But my claw grip does have very few points of contact, and those points of contact have a relatively small surface area due to my fingers pointing directly inwards towards the mouse itself. On the other hand, this mouse fits and up perfectly for Linus's palm grip. With the increased surface area of his palm grip, he found the grips to not really be that big of a problem. Now there are more types of grips than just these two, and if my claw grip was a little bit more relaxed, I likely wouldn't have an issue with the rubber grips either, so your mileage may vary. Another thing to note about the left and right buttons is that they are separate from the rest of the mouse's actual body. At first I thought this was pretty cool, but upon further inspection, I immediately noticed that they were noticeably wobbly. Unfortunately to the point where I even picked up on it while playing games. This results in different areas of the button feeling drastically different to press. I found personally that the worst spot was near the front of the button, and the best spot was near the top on the inside, which was both the most responsive and had the least amount of kind of horizontal awkward movement. That brings us to the scroll wheel and DPI changing button. The scroll wheel has is fairly standard fare. It is a rubberized texture and nicely pronounced scroll points. It also has a press in to click but unfortunately lacks the left and right functionality that we see on some other scroll wheels. The sensitivity changing button behind the scroll wheel has only two custom modes, although personally that's all I would really use anyways. These modes can be set in the driver where you also see a slew of other options. Amongst the sensitivity and 2000 Hz polling rate options, you will find angle snapping and acceleration, which you should definitely leave off if you're a gamer. Also in the driver you'll find some button functionality editing, macro setup, and some basic lighting control options, which include breathing, which is always a favorite of mine. Back to the physical view of the mouse, we have the removable USB cable slot, which goes along with the two included cables. At first look, I was appalled, to say the least. Not only do I hate micro USB cables because of how fragile they are, but it also just seemed so unnecessary. I've never had an issue packing a mouse safely to protect its cable due to their naturally small size. But before I went on a crazy rant about how much I hated this, I spoke with Linus, who pointed out that in an emergency, you could charge your phone if you didn't have another cable, and this does seem to be a modder's mouse, and while a modder may be swapping out a cable while they're swapping out their switches, they could swap out that cable for a different color, a different length, a lighter material, who knows. Whatever it is, they can do it. They may need something like a glue gun to keep the cable in place, as the included like uh, squeeze mounting system that the cable has when you get it out of the box won't be on your replacement cable. It, it, 
would still be possible. And while this doesn't necessarily make me happy with this as a design choice, I must admit that it may possibly, maybe, make some sense. But regardless of that, we're now on the inside of the mouse where we get our first glance at the extremely easy to swap Omron switches. The stock switches can be identified by either their white or gray protruding stems. Unfortunately, I don't have any actual spec list on these as the manual was quite sparse. And as of yet, there is no downloadable manual from their website, although I'm sure this will be addressed once they watch this video. And last but not least, there is the soul of the mouse, the sensor. The Pixart 3988 featured in this mouse doesn't feel like it has any acceleration in my subjective testing, and it felt quite good while playing Counter-Strike Go, which is a really good sign. Overall, this is a very interesting mouse. While ASUS has offered mice before, I think it wouldn't be too bold to say this is their first real foray into the world of premium gaming mice. And knowing ASUS, it will only get better from here. They changed the game up with this mouse by introducing swappable switches. Hopefully they can keep the ball rolling and fix some of the quirks that prevented the Gladius from being as good as we were hoping. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks to Ubisoft. I'm late for the WAN show and have to kind of run off and go do that right now. So subscribe, like, comment here, comment on the forum, do the Amazon affiliate thing, buy a shirt, click on the support us link. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.